I read, and it's uh, uh, just a, 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 a I want I don't want to say generic, but it's a uh, just a, a meditation book, and that you know thoughts that uh, um, that help you kind of guide a, a, a thinking and and. I love it when Jewish saying gets in it. And this one, it used Hillel's saying, if I am not for myself, who is for me? And uh, if I am only for myself, when am I? And if not now, when? Um, love this statement. And this statement is is quoted quite often. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, it is Rosh Chodesh. It is the new month. It is the beginning of the month of Shvat. And uh, if I'm not for myself, who is for me? I have to be my own advocate. I have to be somebody that's going to uh, uh, really support uh, what it is that makes the essence, the etzim of me. Uh, if if I am only for myself, what am I? Uh, if I can't see past my own nose, uh, what kind of partner am I in this world with others? Uh, certainly God, but with other people, uh, um, if I can't see past my own needs, wants, desires, and uh, if not now, when? Uh, the the there's the only time is uh, the presence uh, present. Ooh, the only time is the present. Uh, what what ends up happening is is that uh, if I live in the future, if I live in my imagination, uh, it's it hasn't happened yet. Uh, tomorrow never comes. And uh, uh, if I'm in the past. Uh, um, you know, oftentimes the, these memories, um, you know, that uh, can come up and just uh, be all consuming, uh, but neither of those things are, are real. They are recreated or created. And uh, then it's just a, a matter of my own uh, uh, creation. And then I become the creator. I become a, a person that is in his own or their own creation. Uh, so if not now, when? Uh, the other part to this is that uh, uh, the only place, and I firmly believe this, the only place I can develop a relationship with God, self, and other people is, is in the right now. I can't develop a relationship with my future self, and I can't develop a relationship uh, with my past self. I can only develop a relationship with uh, who I am, where I am right now, and that's also true with God, uh, um, that uh, I can't I can't develop a relationship God with God if I'm somehow uh, imagining what's going to possibly happen in the future, and I can't develop a, a relationship with God if I, I am stuck in, in the past. Uh, so we are looking at uh, Pirkei Avot. We started yesterday. This is my favorite Mishnah, Mishnah 6, or I should say Chapter 6, Mishnah 6. Uh, we really started off that uh, spirituality, however you may define it, Torah, however you may define it, that's a spiritual principle that you have to, as an individual, uh, find out what they truly mean to you. Uh, for anything to have real significance, I have to ask myself fundamentally, what does it mean to me? What does spirituality mean to me? What does Torah mean to me? And uh, what I love about this mission is it starts off right out uh, from the, the onset that it says very, very precisely that if you want to acquire Torah, spirituality, anyone. It is accessible to anyone. Anyone can do it. Anyone is capable. It's not just for a certain group of people. It's not just for a certain uh, person that was born into it. It's not that way. Is that if you truly want something, if you want this spiritual life, if you want a life filled with Torah, if you want whatever it is, right? You want a healthy life, whatever it is, there are things that you can do. And it is, you are capable and able not. It's not dependent on who, where you were born. It's not dependent on uh, how how uh, uh, how much money you have, so on and so forth. Those are external factors. It is really your internal uh, desire and wish to to really achieve this. So, in any event, uh, um, we begin and we started yesterday that there are, and it's going to tell you this mission is going to tell you that there are forty eight ways, forty eight ways to do it if you want to develop a spiritual life, a life of Torah, and so on and so forth. And we started off yesterday. With uh, it's, it literally says Batalmud. It starts off with study. Is that study? What does study represent in our tradition? Study represents that this is how do you how are you to learn something, right? And how is it that you are supposed to be able to uh, transmit something and get something and understand something? Take anything in your life. It takes time. If you want to be a a a uh, a really good uh, whatever, a really good musician, or you want to be able to paint or you want to be able to uh, learn a new language. It all takes time. It all takes study. It all takes uh, an energy to learn it. So that's where we ended up yesterday. Uh, the Shmiat 
uh, ha'ozen. So shmiat, uh, we we know this from Shema. Uh, to heed or listen to, uh, you have to be attentively somebody who is listening. Um, we all too often, and we're going to look at some of our senses, is that we are uh, uh, products of the information that we take in, right? You know, to use example for food. If you take in bad food, you're not going to feel so well, right? If you eat poorly over the course of a, a uh, of a while, uh, I don't know how many of you I've, I've discovered that cheese just doesn't work as much uh, as well for me as I would like. Who doesn't love cheese? But sometimes it just doesn't uh, work out how I would like it. If that's the case, you need to stop eating something that is creating a part uh, creating inside of you uh, uh, unpleasantness, not feeling so well. And here it's saying that you need to be an attentive listener. You need to understand and heed and know what is coming into your ears. In other words, what are you listening to? What are you spending time? If you want to develop a spiritual life, you need to really think about what it is that you are listening to, who you are listening to. Uh, uh, what is the advice that you're taking from other people? Uh, um, we've all heard great advice. We've all heard terrible, terrible advice, but it, it actually you take it in and you have to decide whether or not that is something that you will listen to. Uh, and if we take in terrible advice, how many of us have, have watched people over the course of their life take terrible advice after terrible advice after terrible advice? And is their life better for it? Is it more pleasant? And is it less pleasant? Um, so we need to understand that uh, Shmiat Ba'ozen is that you need to really be aware and thoughtful about what's coming into your uh, listening, uh, what you are listening to. Uh, I found that, you know, what's really interesting is that that music actually makes a difference. You know, if, uh, if we're listening to uh, constantly aggressive music or something like that, does that increase your aggressiveness? As you listen to classical music uh, a lot, does that increase your, your calmness? I don't know. I'm not here to say it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that that's that's one way to see how it does process through uh, our ears, you know, the senses of the ears. The other thing is, is that uh, uh, on the flip side, uh, well, not the flip side, but on the, the, the other side of this is that uh, uh, um, be aware of, uh, um, of who we uh, listen to. Um, again, back to the advice piece, but uh, be aware um, that there is also a person with inside of us. And I've, I've shared this quite often. Uh, uh, would you be, right? Would you consider yourself a friend uh, um, by the way you speak to yourself? So in other words, uh, in other words, um, you know, I talk about this uh, sometimes with uh, people on a, on a regular basis that aren't in, in, a, in a great spot, they say, uh, but, and they're telling themselves some negative stuff. If I spoke to that person, the way they speak to themselves, they would not ever in a million years consider me their friend. Uh, but yet we speak that way to ourselves. Uh, and, 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 and honestly, sometimes it's very uh, unconscious that the, the language we use to ourselves, that, that we, you know, oh, I wish I would have, uh, or I could have done better, or just think about some of the language, right? Or, you know, even, even uh, in, in a stronger way, oh, you're stupid, you should have done this, you should have, right? If I were to speak that way to you, would you consider me a friend? So, so, so when we're talking about listening, let's listen to also how we speak to ourselves. And uh, um, even the language that we use, uh, um, you know, on, on our own personal language that we use to other people, it kind of comes in. You ever caught yourself and you heard yourself and you said, that, that's the, what was that? Okay, so that uh, Shmiata Ozen. Um, the next one is Arichat uh, Sfataim. Uh, um, so it, it says here, the, the English translation is uh, here, they say verbal articulation. Uh, uh, but uh, um, really take a moment before you speak. Um, notice that we're talking about, uh, you know, what's coming in and then what's coming out. Uh, be, be careful. Um, this also comes into uh, uh, what I was just saying before, is that how you speak, speak to yourself, but it's also you have to listen to it, meaning that you accept it, right? If, if, if I truly believe something, right, uh, um, you have to accept it. And part of listening is, is there, there is a, uh, um, a, an element internally of acceptance to that, right? Uh, so this is also talking about how it is that we speak. Uh, um, limiting language. One of the things that you can do is uh, um, that, that uh, I, I, you know, 
take a moment and see how much you speak throughout the day. What are you speaking about? Who do you speak to? How do you speak to them? And so on. And, and then see over the course of the day or the next day, if you can cut that in half and get the same thing uh, across, um, how much of our language is filler and not exact? Uh, and how much language do we use that we're just filling up uh, uh, space uh, because we can? Um, again, we're straying from the right or wrong. It's not about that, uh, you know, you, you should stop talking. That's not at all what this is. This is a, just about developing a spiritual way, a way in which to, to develop relationship with Torah, relationship with God, relationship with spirituality. Again, however you may define it. And uh, um, we're going to do one more and, um, and then we're going to pause there for the day. Um, and binat halev, um, an understanding heart. Um, do we and are we quick to try and really uh, um, understand where somebody else is coming from? Uh, um, that actually is uh, um, can be challenging. It can be a true uh, um, a, a true you could say a, a sheer uh, challenge of will uh, to try and get to the mind and the uh, understanding of where somebody else is coming from. Um, this takes listening. It takes being aware of what you're saying and the questions that you're asking to get to somebody's core. Uh, um, uh, 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 what what is what is 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 coming from their heart, right? And that we understand. Uh, understanding is is not about knowledge. It's not about knowing more. It's not about knowing less. It's not about those things. It's to understand something, is to to truly be in that other person's space or truly understand uh, what is at its core. And too often today, I believe that uh, you know we're quick to to make judgment. Uh, we're quick to think that we understand something that we don't. Um, we're going to wrap up with this last thought: is that. Uh, um, too often, I think I, I am quick uh, to come up with solutions, and I learned a lesson a few uh, a few years back. You know, we want to be solution uh, uh, orientate ourselves to solution. I want to be about uh, you know solving things and not sitting in the problems. But if you don't know what the problem is, then you have no idea what you're solving for. And uh, too often, I'm quick to come up with solutions without truly understanding the problem. And if you do that in math, right, if you just, uh, I, they, they told you a million times, show your work so that you understand the problem and then your solution, uh, you can get to the same solution, you can understand the solution, but if you don't truly understand the problem, uh, then how, how is it that the solution is going to ultimately stand? Um, so getting to know the real problem, understanding the real problem, sitting in that problem, then we can get to solutions so that we're building not on quicksand, but that we're building on a solid concrete foundation. Um, so we're going to end today. We'll pick up uh, next time with uh, a few more. We're, we're four in out of 48. Uh, so whatever the math is on that, all I know is that means we've got a bit of a ways to go in this mission to get to the 48 ways in which we can develop a spiritual relationship, a relationship with Torah, a relationship with God, and ultimately a relationship with others and ourselves. Tov, have a wonderful day. Chodesh Tov.